Hi, I'm Rebecca Rainier. Here's what's on our full plate today. I think you need a garlic rocker. Take a look. The coolest kitchen gadgets coming up next. Also, you need to sweat it out. We go to an exercise class that guarantees you're going to sweat it out. And finally, the pin test is back. We're going to test something that looks really cool on Pinterest, but does it really work? And finally, be get in the kitchen. We're going to do a fresh flip on pretzels. Welcome to the program. I'm Rebecca Rainier, and just like the song says, I'm glad you're here. All right, you've heard that phrase, the right job needs the right tools. Well, it's true in the kitchen. I've got a kitchen guru that she knows the coolest gadgets, where they are, how to get them. Take a look at what you're going to want in your stocking stuffers for the kitchen gadgets this year. Can I call you that, Paula? Kitchen guru, gadget guru? Whatever you want to. I don't care. <laughs> Cool so, kitchen department. Yeah. Ooh, cool kitchen department. Okay. So you Paula visited the Chicago Home Show and found some great new kitchen gadgets. Plus, they're all affordable. Looks like uh, before we got going, everything that you brought <laughs> for the most part looks to be under twenty dollars. Check out this sponge. So why in a kitchen is this a good thing? Show me. Um, that. Because what it does, I happen to um, have black granite. Mm -hmm. You just wipe up, and it doesn't streak your counter. They wipe up even granite with no streaks. But these are the most popular, one of the most popular gadgets that you've got. Under $10 and they're scrubbies. What are they made out of? This is made out of corn cobs and synthetic materials. This one is made out of peach pits. This is the gentler one. This is a little harsher. And it just gets yeah. your stuff clean. Yeah, take away that Brillo pad, the SOS pad. You won't need it anymore. Um, the wonderful thing is it too does not have, keep a lot of bacteria in it. Um, I just put it in my dishwasher, run it through the rinse cycle, and then bring it out when I need to use it. It also can be used on surfaces like your oven, your, I mean, your stove, your countertops, you know, whatever. Then there's the squishy little honeycomb trivet. These are? Well, these can be a trivet, a pothole, or a potholder. But what I like about these is, is that they're so pliable. I mean, they're not stiff plastic. Um, the they're just home trivet is what it's right like. and they're okay. just wonderful so when you're getting in that casserole out of your oven you can really grab the casserole you don't have to worry about the food you know it's just it's just a wonderful pliable um, item for your kitchen sometimes I even hang them from my um, my cabinet hook and things like I that I think they're earrings yes they can be whatever <laughs> <laughs> and then we spice things up a bit is a seesaw for your garlic. What it's called it? the garlic rocker. Garlic rocker. Joseph Joseph. Um, <laughs> we have sold out over and over on these. Um, but it's just, if you're mean to your garlic, your garlic will be mean to you, they say. <laughs> but I just have a few. Um, what do they mean by that? Well, like if you if you beat it up, you know, if it gets squeezed too hard. <laughs> this is Don't a gentle beat up your garlic. way of, here I've done a clove of garlic. With, and you're not even sweating or crying no, or anything? No, no. I'm just gently rocking it. <laughs> it's just fabulous. It's like the garlic whisperer. Yeah. It's just like, rock on, baby. I think garlic would like this. Yes. Okay. And it will like you. <laughs> and throw that plastic wrap away, sister. It is something that you can use. You can get away from using saran wrap, aluminum foil. It just sticks on to... Um, a porcelain surface, a glass surface, a stainless steel surface. This all co also can go in the oven up to 440 degrees. So if you don't have that lid for your casserole, you can use this. Look at this. It's a teeny tiny mini wine bag. bag. Louis Vuitton-esque wine bag. Yeah. It's the only kind of Louis Vuitton bag I can afford. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what you can do. You can put your jams in here from the Paula Brown shop. We can use this as a gift basket. Um, we can put lots of things in like yeah. this or oh, if you go out and buy a scarf for your girlfriend or just anything these are going to be the it bags for the holiday Vodka, already it's my friends <laughs> yeah, <Vodka. laughs> but see how cute this is i mean how cute is that rebecca just effortlessly packed up a wonderful gift bag that's everything i do is effortless it's just 
Yes, everything I do is effortless. Again, this is one of my favorite things. All of these items are available at the paulabrownshop.com, so you can take a look and find the names and the brands, but this is the coolest thing in the world. It really does work. <laughs> All right. We always exercise on this show because we always eat on this show because I like to eat. In fact, the only reason I exercise is so I can eat a little bit more. We found a class that really sweats it out. It is called Bikram Yoga, and it's a great class if you really do need to sweat it out. Take a look. Looks peaceful, right? In fact, how in the heck could these nice moves cause this amount of sweat? Well, it's over 100 degrees in this yoga studio. It's called Bikram Yoga, and this workout is gaining popularity nationwide. It's a uh, specific series of 26 postures and two breathing exercises that's performed in a heated room, and it's the very same class every single time. Why is it so hot in there? Uh, we heat up the room to mimic the conditions in Calcutta, India, where Bikram learned this series or uh, learned from his guru uh -huh. where it was very hot. And so this is Bikram. He developed the classes and the 26 positions along with the idea that it should be hot, very hot, almost too hot for our camera to get a good picture. Class members explain why they love it. There's a ton of differences between Bikram and other styles of yoga. Um, obviously the heat is one, one difference. Another is that there is no downward dog position. Plus practicing the same 26 positions lets you see how you're improving. That gives you an opportunity to see how your body kind of changes and develops every time. So you make like a little progress and a little more progress and that's why people find it addicting because you're like, ooh, I can do more. Then there's the sweating. Proponents say the heat helps you sweat out toxins. You can actually, if you've been eating kind of unhealthfully over the weekend, you can kind of taste it in your sweat. We burn between 600 and 1,000 calories every single class. Um, anything from weight loss to having any type of uh, chronic disorder like arthritis, carpal tunnel, anything like that, knee problems, mm -hmm. you're able to fix them by going into that hot room, sweating out, loosening up the muscles. You're basically renewing your body from the inside and out. In that. Kelly Williams, the owner, trained for nine weeks with Bikram himself before being able to teach. She says she's seen people over and over again become addicted to the slow, hot, yoga workout. Once you get used to breathing in that room, you love it. Mm -hmm. She also says any age and fitness level can do the class and see improvement, but drink a lot of water before and after class because you will sweat. Can this qualify as my workout for the day? <laughs> and finally, Kelly says. That's the other thing, all the sweating will help reverse the aging process. Whoa! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like it. Most cities now have a Bikram studio, and instructors say it's a workout you should try about three times to decide if you're hot on Bikram yoga. They do sort of look like they're all going to pass out, right? It was just that hot in there. All right, so Bikram yoga is really available throughout the country. It's a little different than hot yoga, so you've heard of that also. Just do an online search to find a Bikram yoga studio near you. All right, so all of us have technology in our house that maybe is a little out of date. The kids got the new iPhone or the new iPod. What do you do with the old ones? Well, I want to introduce you to a really cool charity. They want your old technology so they can send it to people who really need it. Annie Klepper was curious where her hand-me-down iPod would end up next. That got her entire family thinking. What's great is the kids sort of took it and ran with it. And that's part of what I love about this is that it's children helping other children. Like many of us, the Kleppers had a lot of older technology sitting around the house. And they decided that old technology could change lives. Little Annie sums up the plan best. To always help people and remember what other people feel like, not just what you feel like. The Klepper kids started Tune It Forward. They collect everything from MP3 players to iPods. It's all sent to an orphanage in Haiti, where many of the children are not able to attend school. Food's crucial, water's crucial, medicine's crucial. But we thought, well, okay, we're, we're just kids, so let's make a difference in our own way. They don't have school or anything, and so they can listen to some of those podcasts and learn about science and math and all those things. And they might be able to play a couple cool tunes, too. Yeah. And that old technology will create a lot of new learning opportunities for the children in Haiti. Educational podcasts that they could download. There are audio books. There are videos. Um, 
it's really endless. That you know, think of the things that we get from the internet that you could download onto these that they'll have access to. They packed up their first box full of technology for the orphanage this summer. We're sending them um, headphones um, along with the iPods and chargers. It's amazing to think that these kids have not seen any technology like this before. And for them to open up an iPod and having the ability to learn and to just listen to music. Another shipment is going out soon. And as they watch their children change other children's lives, Shannon and Chris Klepper can't help but smile. It's fun for me to see through my children's eyes that they are helping other kids. And it's not taking a ton of effort. It is a very simple concept, which I think is the kind of the cool part of it, that it's such a simple thing that um, can have such a huge impact. I want to thank Lisa Guyton for that story. She brought it to us. Uh, and she's a fantastic reporter. Uh, this charity is called Tune It Forward. So if you're thinking, yes, we have extra stuff around this house or they got the latest iPod for Christmas, don't forget, tune it forward. We're also going to link it to our fullplate.tv. So if you want to help or if your kids want to help, there's an easy way to do it. All right, when we come back, we're going to do some pin testing to see if it's a pin win or a pin fail. Don't go away.